In today's tutorial, let's do Bobblicious pillows. These have the bobbles and I'm going to be teaching you how to customize this for any size pillow that you would like. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to be making Bobblicious pillows and you can go bold or you can go neutral. You can do whatever you want. These pillows are quite amazing and they work over top of a pillow form. Now this is a great little pattern. Now these pillows are quite massive. They're 20 inches in uh, square but I'm going to be teaching you today how to be able to customize it because maybe you don't want a pillow so big or maybe you even want a bigger one. Today I'm gonna teach you how to be able to alter the size in order to have this pattern work for you. So let's go over the yarn, the hook and I have a diagram of course to show you what is happening in this particular project. So today's yarn is Peyton's Canadiana. You're going to need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. Let me show you the diagram next and I'm gonna show you exactly how this thing is gonna work out. So here's a small example of the Bobblicious pillow. So I did a smaller version just like so and here is the diagram. Now this is obviously a smaller diagram because when you go to do this there's chaining of 68 in order to get that 20 inch wide square that you want if you're following exactly what you're reading. So what we have here is that we have the bobbles that appear and the bobbles are in every other line. So one line is just strictly double crochet and the other line is single crochet with the bobbles and you can see how it works out. Now what I really wanna point out to you here when you're looking at this do you see how you have three the next one that's kind of in the middle just like this and the next one is three and then in the middle like so. So you kind of see that it's it's not just lining up on top of each other. It kind of shifts over and then back and then shifts over and back. So when you go to look at the diagram like this for example this is a smaller version and essentially you have your double crochets and you have I put B that's technically not uh, uh, a symbol in crochet but I just put it just for argument's sake. So I put a B this is where a bobble is then there's sing three single crochets, a bobble, three single crochets and then a bobble etc. So when we come to the round or sorry row number four you can see that we start off a little bit further into the project so that the bobbles will then be in the middle. So if you look at it really carefully you see that the bobbles kind of just are lining together quite perfectly. So what do you need to do in order to change the size of this particular project? That's next. If you would like to change the size of this particular project you have to chain in multiples of four. There's no additional chains it's just all multiples of four. So everything is working in four. So um, I basically took a measurement and it turns out that about four of double crochets equals about one inch. So you can get a good idea. So if you wanted a 14 inch pillow you could do 14 times four which is four double crochets and that will give you the sense that you need on how many uh, chains that you need to start off with. So the multiples are four in order to work this. So as long as you keep it in multiples of four you'll be able to have the bobbles all work out quite perfectly. So without further ado let's grab our hook and some yarn and let's do a small example together. I've got one side of the panel done. I'm gonna do the other now and then I'm gonna show you how to put it together and then do the final rotation around. So let's grab a yarn and make a slip knot. Okay. So it says in the instructions that we have to chain 68 if we're doing the 20 inch pillow but if you're not and you wanna do something smaller and I'm gonna do a smaller example as well is that we are going to chain in multiples of four. So if you keep it in multiples of four it'll work out perfectly. So for myself I'm going to do a small sample so I'm only gonna do 16 and that's a multiple right of four which is uh, four sets. So that's what I'm gonna do. So make sure you either chain 68 or do in multiples of four. So one, two, three and four and just keep on going to the size that you need. And in my case I'm gonna go to 16. So when you get your chain done hopefully it's still in multiples of four. Mine's in 16 right now and what we need to do is that the first row back that we need to go fourth chain from the hook. So we go one, two, three, go to the fourth and you're going to double crochet. So go into the back loop of that, that chain it gives a nicer finish on the edge. Okay, so you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way across the chain right back to the very start. Like this. Okay, so please double crochet yourself all the way back throughout your chain. So I've now double crocheted myself all the way back and I want to take account on how many posts there are including that first chaining of three right where my fingers are moving right over here. 
okay, right here. So I wanna count and I have a total of 14. You're gonna wanna write that number down somewhere on your pattern. You are most likely, especially if you're in the learning phase, you might drop a stitch. I did it during the prototype sample by accident and didn't realize I did it until I got near the top and I noticed I was getting more of a wedge look and I realized I dropped a stitch somewhere. So if you write down that number at any point, you could double check when you're do doing your double crochets across to make sure that you are not dropping any stitches. Let's begin to move up to row number two. So row number two we're gonna turn and work. So this will be the starting for row number two every time you hit row number two. So this is part of the repeat pattern. To start row number two we chain up one and then we double crochet into the starting stitch. And then we single crochet into the starting stitch like that. So this stitch plus two more will be all single crochets. So one and two. Okay, so the first one is single crochet, the second one is single crochet, the third one is single crochet. So you're gonna do that each and every time. The next one is a bobble. So the bobbles are, are basically five um, together double crochets. So let's show, my, show you how to do that. So you're gonna wrap the hook going into the next stitch, going in, yarn over, pull through, pull through two and hold. And you wanna continue to do that until you get six of these loops on the hook. So yarn over into the same stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold. Yarn over, same stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold. So you have four loops now, you're looking for six. Okay, and you continue to do it and you're gathering all those loops on the hook. Once you have your six, yarn over, pull through all six and that is your bobble. So it doesn't look like a bobble yet until you do the very first one. So the next three, so there's always gonna be three single crochets that separate these bobbles from each other. So the next three are going to be single crochets. So one, two, and three. So you will have noticed when you did that, the bobble just popped out of the back like this. So the next one now is a bobble. So let's do that five together. So just continue to do that until you get your six on the hook. Okay, it's just a matter of time spending on this is really no brainer. You have your six, yarn over, pull through all six and then you single crochet the next three. So one, two and three and on row number two the next one is obvious uh, is going to be a bobble as well. So just bobble it. So one, two, three, four, and five. You have to do that five times but you end up with six loops on the hook. And then the final two of this particular row will all, or so yarn over, pull through everything. And then the final two are one single crochet each. Do not forget you have to single crochet into that turning chain. Not into a gap but it actually into the chain itself. Okay, so let's turn our work and look. So you got three bobbles just like that. So let's move along and we're gonna go for row number three. So rows number three and five are always the same. They're gonna chain up three, one, two, and three. Starting in the next one over, you want to double crochet. So you're just looking. So just look on top. You'll see all the stitch works here. Now the ones in the bobble, the bobbles, the stitches will appear like it's kinda in behind. Just turn it around and you'll see exactly what's going on. So now you're just going to double crochet yourself all the way across. Making sure you're capturing all of the stitches. I dropped my stitches because I accidentally missed one of these because I wasn't look, looking for it, how it was bending over toward the back side. So at certain points I would recommend that you just check to make sure that you have the right stitch counts uh, when you count it across like I kinda mentioned to you to write down a number and to make sure you get it. So you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way across. So you're going to notice that the bobble when it does the bobble is gonna kinda hang over some of this double crochet. So you're thinking to yourself, gee there's a lot of extra gapping there. It doesn't look as close as the photo and it does. It's just the fact is that these bobbles need to kinda lean over top of each other. When you get all the way to the end, make sure you do single or double crochet right to the very end. And that was row number three. Turn to work and go for row number four. So row number four, the bobble is gonna start further. So it's gonna start in between the first two here and then in between and then so on and so on. So this one, this time here is that we just continue to go along. Okay, so we 
chain one and we single crochet this one plus four more. So the next four are going to all be single crochets. So that was two, three, four, and five. So there's gotta be a total of five single crochets and if you turn it around you can kinda see the next one is gonna be right in between the two bobbles here. So then we're gonna bobble into this one. So just like the other one we're going to continue to bobble with three single crochets all the way into the very end of the row. Okay, you're looking for your six on the hook, yarn over pull through all six and then single crochet in the next three. So one, two, and three. So the next one here is going to be a bobble again. So you're gonna continue to continue to bobble all the way across the row. Okay, so my small example, I am already near to the other side and so in the final in this row number four, there's going to be four stitches left and if you look at it here, you got one, two, three, and four. So you're just gonna single crochet into the final four stitches that are available to you. So regardless of how big your sample was, that'll happen to you as long as you kept it in multiples of four when you started. So we're gonna start up row number five which is the final of the repeat pattern and when you turn it around you can see that the bobbles are directly in the middle of the other two or the other ones that are already there. Let's begin number five. We're gonna chain three, one, two, and three. This is like row number three. It's just double crochet and you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way across. So the repeat pattern for this whole thing is that rows number from two all the way to five are being repeated over and over and so you're doing that so that you get the bobbles to be offset from each other and it just really kind of works out easily to be quite honest with you. So what I'm gonna do is that you can continue to work on your pillow to get to the size that you want and um, it's really quite easy. You just kind of lie it down and try to get it to a close square. Use your measuring tape if you have to and what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna get it to the similar size to what is already existing here and then I'm gonna show you how to put them together and fasten them together and then I'll show you how to do the final trim which is quite amazing. So I'm gonna leave the rest of that for you so please go back to row number two and then continue two, three, four, and five. So continue row two, three, four, and five, two, three, four, and five until you get to the size that you would like and when I come back I'll show you how to join these. So now I have two panels complete. Okay, so I wanna kinda match them. So I don't wanna make sure that they go together like this. I wanna keep it so that the lines are going in the same direction. So what I want to do is that I wanna turn these so that they're opposite to each other so that the bobbles are facing outward so that the interior has no bobbles in there. And what we're going to do is that we're gonna start on any corner that we wish. You just gotta make sure when you go all the way around, you don't go all the way around without putting in your pillow form first. But let's grab our yarn and let me show you how to put these together. So grabbing our yarn we create another slip knot and we're gonna go into a corner space. So we're just gonna just go into corner of one. So just right into a corner okay, of one and then we go on to the other one. So the same position but in the other one and we wrap the yarn, pull it through. Okay and we're gonna chain one to start. So what we're going to do, we're just gonna evenly space it. So in the sides here, there's really no obvious spaces for stitches. So you just have to equally space it. Whatever you do on the front one, you have to kind of match it to the second one and behind. I would recommend that you do not go into any major spaces. So don't go into like for example here, don't go into underneath this gap, go right into a chain itself because if you do that it's gonna open that up and you're gonna see the pillow form quite obviously on the corners. So you just wanna stick to the going into portions of the chain on the outside. So on the on here you're just gonna equally space them all the way across. If you are, are providing it and going too quickly you're going to see that um, it's not really joining together too, too well but if you take your time, put in many of them but not over cram it, you're gonna have a lot better look. So just have to do whatever you're doing on the front, you do it on the back side as well. So on the corners you're going to put in three single crochets as you turn the corner. So no matter what you do, you just have to do that. So I want you to go all the way around, well not really all the way around, I want you to go 
and do three sides. So do this side, this side, and this side. Leave one side open because then we have to put our little pillow inside of that. So please just equally space single crochets all the way around uh, through the three sides and then on the corners itself put in three single crochets. And I might as well just show you that. I'm almost there anyway. So I'm just coming up close to the edge. So I'm on the edge now. So just going in one side and onto the other and just put in three. So one, two, and three. Now the advantage to this is that this side here has actual stitch work. So you can just go into the stitch work on this side. So you do get a little bit of a break as you go all the way around. So just go in there. So please uh, complete at least three sides and then meet me back here and then I'll show you what to do next. So now I have three sides complete. Look how it nicely does it finish off and you can see it on both sides. And so now we have the final one here. So you're gonna wanna slide in your pillow. Just slide it right in and then you're just going to use it. So I did it intentionally so that the final side had the stitches. So um, I went down the you know the, the hard sides first and on both sides so that I could do a nice finish then with, when the pillow is in. Make sure you did your three single crochets in the corner and then with your pillow inside you're just going to single crochet yourself shut. But we're not done. We have one more round to do. The final round is the nice round. It gives it like a cording look uh, when you see it on the, the sofas in the actual models photo that you can see that it has a really nice cording ridge and that's because we're going to do reverse single crochet uh, in this particular round or in this particular um, border as well. And you can change the, the color of the, the cording if you wish. I don't really recommend it. Um, but again, this is your creativity. So you're gonna just go all the way across. Now we, we started off with just one single crochet uh, when we started. So we have to make sure that in the final corner we want to make sure we get the other two in there. So here's the final corner. So I wanna just add two more double crochets into that same spot and then I wanna join it to the beginning single crochet that we started with like this. So now we're going to do reverse single crochet. So the final border is reverse single crochet. It gives you that cording look. So what we just do is that we chain up one and we go in reverse to what we're automatically doing. So we're gonna come into the stitch right before it, going in, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two. And then we go backwards. So go into the next stitch before, yarn over, pull through. So let me go a little slower. So in, yarn over, pull, and then through two. So instead of going forward, we're going backwards. This is also called the crab stitch. And what this is going to do, it's gonna create this beautiful little cording look just like you see here. Um, it would even look cooler with a different color if you really wanted to. It's up to you. It's your creativity, your yarn. And so even on the corners, you're just gonna just follow into every stitch so you don't have to add any extras to the to the corners, you just go into every stitch that's available to you all the way around. So I'm turning the corner naturally. So I'm not adding anything and it just automatically just follows around perfectly. You see that? So please do the reverse single crochet all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of this and we'll finish off for today. When you get all the way back around, you just have to slip stitch to the very beginning just like that. And what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna uh, just leave an extra long tail and I'm gonna trim and I'm gonna grab a darning needle. So I'm gonna pull up on the hook first. Just yarn over, pull through like this and then just put this strand through a darning needle. Now the best way to lock in the strand at the end is to go in three different directions and how we do that is that we're, just watch. So you're gonna go across underneath some fiber. So a nice sharp darning needle does a great job here. Go across. Don't try to get on the top of this so that you ruin it. Then just come back in the same direction into a different path. So going through different fibers and then go back one more time into a different path. So just get into a little bit different areas and you can safely trim it. So your pillow can never stretch in three different directions at one time. So this string should never ever pop out on you. Okay, so this is what your pillow would look like. Uh, just pretend it was all stuffed with a pillow. Uh, just get rid of any uh, tails that you may have in this particular project. 
but uh, it looks really quite amazing and you have a great accent piece for your particular sofa. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Enjoy your new pillow and we'll hopefully see you again real soon. Bye-bye.